Steven. Hello, welcome to Vibe Osmosis. How are you doing? Doing good. good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I've listened to your music. I'm a big fan. You got some really cool synth stuff. I'm great to ask you some questions. I'm very excited to ask you some questions. Cool. Uh, my name's Adian. Ed. I play. Uh, I play uh, Armoire. Uh, it's uh, synth pop. You already know what's up. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Oh, that's some really, really good stuff. And, like, it's, like, really, like, energy, but, like, also progressive and has, like, to me, like, this 8-bit kind of video game feel. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Go, go ahead and explain, like, what kind of um, influence and inspired um, you to start making music? Uh, for... Or more, it's been just uh, collecting records, just collecting new wave records. They were cheap at the time. I mean, this was maybe just last last few years. Record stores were just getting rid of them, pretty cheap. And so, you know, they they come up with all kinds of sounds. You know, sound kind of like out of you know out of world style. So. It was just really cool how they just turned that into pop music and people just like and I uh, wanted to know how to do that. And like kind of conquered in and made like your own like unprecedented sound. Um, what, what would you say kind of like inspired that or kind of like influenced that? Um, is it kind of like the place like you were, the kind of like culture? Um, or like place like you grew up or like kind of like place like to hang out or like watch or anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of all that. I guess like the things that come to mind is just kind of growing up, uh, growing up in San Diego, California. Uh, I mean, I live on the South side, so I mean, it's a very populated, you know, the, Mexicans, you know, I'm Mexican. Uh, so, I mean, growing up in the 90s, it's just, you know, being around a lot of that culture down here, you know, which is just, it's very, it's, it's everywhere here. <laughs> and it's cool, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, it just reminds me of like all the bootleg CDs that you'd find at flea markets, all the, uh, all the radio, all the radio music. And I guess like I kind of found that in those records uh, a couple of years ago and that kind of just put me on this trip where I was just wanting to explore that as a as the person I am now that's uh, pretty interesting and definitely kind of translates to kind of some of the stuff you have like in your in your stuff um I, I seen that you actually have like a show coming up you want to kind of mention shout out Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to, I got a show February 9th in uh, Fullerton, downtown Fullerton. Uh, it's at the Continental Room. It's uh, presented by Narlord, uh, Alec. Really cool dude I met uh, in October when I went, when I, me and the uh, collective I play with, the uh, Egg Records here in San Diego. Uh, went up to play a, a, uh, in Pomona. It was the, uh, I forgot the name of the bar. It was like DB, DBA something, whatever. They have a cool stage and, you know, a really cool crowd. It's a really strange feel, but it was fun. I met him there. He, you know, he did the music and invited me up to play the Continental Room, which is a place that kind of wanted to play maybe like a year ago. I kind of told myself, like, hey, man. It'd be, it, it would be nice. It would be funny to play a spot like that. And I guess with most things that you know, you asked, or you know, or you're wanting to attract, I guess you just gotta put it out there in the air and kind of forget about it. Um, I guess another thing um, in your band, kind of break down, um, like what your band is, who's involved, how it, how like who does what, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, 
it's a for mo- for most of the stuff that's on the uh, uh like the uh, streaming platforms and stuff it's mostly i mostly write it i mostly write it i write it here i have like a home studio so i'll write it and i just uh, with the addition of robert who is my wingman he plays he we, we started writing together recently but uh yeah he he adds that extra layer uh of sync when we perform live and we actually you know we've been putting together some new stuff so yeah it's just been you know that's it's mostly what i you know how i write that and um so yeah you know just home studio writing get off of work write write some more <laughs> have you ever it's recorded fun. in the studio in studio uh not with this project no i this is it's pretty new it's, a, it's only like a year old so uh i have yet to experience that um but it's it's fairly quick. I guess it comes down to just like having your process down and how to tap into all that. That'd be cool though. I think uh, I'd like to maybe try it out at Savannah Studios, which is uh, it's run by the people that have that do uh, Lollipop Records. And they've have been following me for a little bit, and I keep looking at their studio and all this fun stuff they got to offer. It's it's an idea. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, I guess that really does make sense. Uh, another thing I want to bring up is your astrological sign. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm a triple Virgo in tropical. And I guess in Vedic, I'm a triple Leo. Do you think that uh, you feel like what they represent? I mean, I know a little bit about it, but is, do you think it's like, something like you identify with? Yeah. So, uh, I, I do. When did you kind of come across like astrology? Is it kind of something you've always been like followed, or is it kind of something more recent? Uh, I I've, I've followed I've been following that for a while. I don't know. Like I just when I got into music, I kind of like started to see how like it re- related with the occult. I don't know. It's weird. It's just kind of like how how uh, old, you know, ancient civilizations would use music, you know, for ceremony and stuff like that. In the way, you know, like this, you know. And so, so I started to, you know, see writing as a way to, like, kind of, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's it's pretty interesting. Like, I dig it. I mean, I'm a fan of uh, astrology. I think to me, it kind of like gives me an idea um, about like different connections. Even though, like personally, me, like my, like me and my dad, for instance, are born on the same day, but like we uh, have like our own, you know, like identities, and like that's kind of like why I feel like um, that kind of showed me too that like I don't want to like read too much into it because like you can be born on the same day and like completely different people and like feel and think mm. differently. So yeah, um, no, no, it's, of course. Yeah. And, like, uh, that's, just thinking... that's why I do think like, you know, how people know um, different parts, like their birth charts and different, like their moon phases and stuff. Like I do think it, it does kind of like pay like a big attention to like what, um, like different like attributes maybe kind of find it easier to identify with, you know? Yeah. Um, no. It's, yeah, it's I, I agree. Intrigued, like intrigued me for a long time myself. So, in what sign are you? I'm allegedly all Scorpio. Allegedly, everything, everything about me lines up with Scorpio, 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 Scorpio. That's cool. So, but uh, I mean, like with my dad, you know, I guess he's got different moon and time phrase, so it's like a little bit different for him, but you know, born on the same day. So it just kind of blows my mind how that kind of, like, stuff, I feel like kind of makes it makes adjustments to maybe how you feel about 
uh, where you're tied into or categorized maybe. Yeah. No, totally. totally. Now, now, how do you feel about like the kind of social constructs that we have today? Uh, kind of like for one of the big things is like not everybody using the same bathroom. Not everyone using the same bathroom. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of strange. I think it's, it's interesting well, it's not... because if you got to go, you got to go. Um, I think like I... whenever you live in some cities and they only like provide you like one bathroom for like all like four apartments in that area, you're like, yeah, I guess like in other words, I can't be too fucking picky about if somebody's sharing like that same shower or something. Yeah. No, no, yeah, for real. I'm just, I'm just glad that that's kind of like, in a way, changing. Like, you know, you're starting to see way more. Uh, people are way more open to the these ideas. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like uh, uh, just kind of just goes with, you know, all the old idea that is dying. You know, with all the elder people and those older generations. No, yeah, like, I'll give it a I, I definitely agree. Like, to me, there's somewhat of an idea of this old way, but like, in a lot of in a lot of aspects, like in music, we have like bands that kind of send attention to, um, I feel like other kind of um, injustices and different like movements. Um, one of the big things I want to say is like the refugee crisis. So, like, I know like a lot of bands like whenever. Um, you know, like that kind of first became more aware to some Americans, even though it's kind of been a thing for a long time. Um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, if some bands kind of stepped up and and just like showed awareness and that kind of stuff, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they use their plat. Yeah, using their platforms to you know to to show their audiences. Yeah, I think you know? I think in in doing that, um, you know, it does like open up that door to like other idea or other ways of thinking and like if you're interested in like the music or the art then maybe you should be more mindful or like more adjusted to having the idea that there's like a billions of people in the world or something yeah <laughs> um, yeah no. I, I wondered if that was something that kind of like correlates with you because your music is kind of tr like translated in like a universal of language of love you know like it's kind of like a very wide range um to like uh, in, in so many ways like you could put it with movie you could put it with like you know your own visual you can see it as like this this band um it's like i kind of wondered where some of this came from oh uh mm, i don't know i this. Well, I, I, f I feel like it was just more of like exploring, finding an avenue that I, I, I could relate with or something like, like I, I wanted to, when I started playing, I wanted to just be, I thought about, uh, I just uh, thought about how practical and what the future would be like with, you know, seeing all these more and more groups playing with, you know, laptops and other type of gear that isn't the traditional guitar and fucking half stack and all of that stuff. And, and I feel like that is kind of like what kept me interested in kind of following with what I was doing. And yeah, like, you know, you think about like you're saying, you know, you could, you could totally put, you could totally make a vision and throw, you could put it, you know, trans, you know, throw visual and, and all that stuff. And, uh, but I, I guess, like, I guess, what I, I mean, what I've, you know, wanting to do, what I've been trying to do is just fucking, I, I don't know, like, try to live in something more that suits our time, where we don't, I don't have to worry about too much. Do you think that's where some of those messages come from and like the music itself is kind of more of like an organic um, democratic thing for you? Uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I guess like, I guess like, uh, let me see. I don't know. 
I'm just I'm just riding like <laughs> I can relate. Uh, one of the uh, big questions I feel like is always important is a favorite movie of yours. Oh. Favorite movie. Let me see. Uh, one that stands out. I kind of like a. What is that? Face Off. You ever seen Face Off? The one with Nick. Yeah, and the John Travolta. And then they got, you know, they have this, like, you know, crazy pissing contest, you know? And they're, like, you know, the whole, like, hero and villain. But it's, just, you know what I mean? It's, it's just these, like, two dudes that, you know, been in all kinds of movies just going at each other somehow. I, it, it just popped in my head because it, it was just something that, like, I saw so like i saw that movie so much like sometime like fucking growing up like i don't know why it was just the only movie that i've only seen on vhs and never on digital or tv or anything else for real yeah i've never seen it like on any like i mean i use like my computer mostly so like i don't have like regular tv it's like you know what like i you know you know it it probably it probably is the same for me because yeah it was like growing up i had these uncles are into like you know these like action movies and i remember that one was one you know but you know watch uh scarface is actually really good too that was another one i was seeing like i'd see around the time because i used to go over the family parties or whatever growing up and you know all the adults are you know having fun drinking and eating whatever and they put on a movie they didn't care what was it you know whatever they had on the shelf and it was always either something like that and i remember scarface is a good one like, all the yeah. way through and also i love like watching it from like the first tape like if you're watching on vhs like the first tape only and like not even like going further uh, going further because you know like what what happens <laughs> and like also, oh, yeah. also once you do oh, yeah. you, you know you're getting yourself into trouble <laughs> Oh yeah, I think so, uh, another movie <laughs> I feel like I've only seen only on VHS is uh, the Titanic. Like I can only recall like ever seeing that, like actually putting in both VHSs and like watching that movie all the way through, but only on VHS. Shit, <laughs> the Titanic. You know what? This reminds me of uh, because uh, you know, I didn't. In, in, the thought didn't appear, but you know, I, I, maybe like seven years ago, I was going frequently a lot of thrift stores. And I remember I used to go out to the Salvation Army, like right here in Chula Vista off of Broadway. And they were trying to get rid of all the VHSs. So they would have this special, like, hey, you know, buy, you, you get like two or three for a dollar. And I would just, you know, it was something to do. I had a girlfriend at the time. And I'd be like, hey, let's go, let's go look at what they got. And there's always these, you know, crates. And we would find all kinds of, like, you know, strange things there. Like, it, it'd be like, you know, I guess the pops of, like, the fucking movie, of the VHSs. And then you'd find those obscure, like, horror movies. Yeah, like, I remember, like, true. I saw one where I was like, what was it? It was, like, The Devil's Reign, which nice. was super fucking budget movie like you know like it, it's, it was a lot of stuff like that remember that one i remember a copy of uh what the fuck was it called uh it was like can't like uh, i don't know if i think it was like oh it, it was a uh, heavy metal you ever, you ever heard of that one yeah that movie <laughs> is really good it's underrated yeah they don't, yeah, they don't like talk it. about it enough and give it enough cred yeah, I remember finding a copy of that. Like, still in the wrapper. I don't know who the fuck had that in, in their house, or who, what, got, what person died, and it ended up in the crate out there, but we got, we got that one for a bit. But yeah, I got rid of all that, man, because it's just fucking piling up at some point. I uh, I still have, like, my VHS collection somewhat in storage, and, like, I just don't have, like, my actual VHS player anymore in my old TV, so... I I just kind of been rocking the digital age since since the pandemic I guess really so this was uh, I'm guessing the what's kept was keeping vinyl what like, was keeping the real like the vinyl stuff um are you a vinyl collector or, or player? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you yeah, have like, just... a favorite vinyl? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, I bought. Uh, I bought like I, I'm really into like kind of like minimal minimal synth stuff, like a lot of the or like you know darker darker synth. Uh, dancey things. I got a copy of Malaria. It's like a cop that was. I forgot what fucking release days. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's a dark entry zone. But that was really good. I got a copy of the Screamers, like, you know, that collection. You know, you know Screamers from LA? I have a few of those uh, random kind of like UK records where it's just like the uh, boom ch boom ch boom ch, you know, that kind of just like <laughs> yeah, very like... very fast paced, two hundred beat per minute kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, like it's always, I feel like it's always good to just kind of like play to and like mix it in with like the uh, like the random like, classical music where it's just like doesn't have like, any percussion at all and you're just kind of, like okay like i guess this this little techno sample kind of s thing will will do um do you ever kind cool. of so you... you ever like re remix your own music I, I like i've seen like you have like a lot of different corporations in your music but have you ever remixed it no i haven't said that um with your with your music go ahead and break down like your recording process and and how it happens Okay, so for so this is something I kind of been looking at uh, with this project was just finding ways to make uh, writing faster. So you know you get those ideas that you want to capture, and you can you know I, I'll usually it would be two things. It'd be like I'll hear something, I don't know, like let's just say like an instrument on like the radio or something, you know, and then I'll go about it by you know making my version my transition because that's the way memory works it's just you got to keep telling yourself and the more times you tell yourself it kind of keeps changing it's like the game telephone like they used to you know used to play in elementary school so anyways so you know you start doing that and and i guess usually after adding a couple of layers of synths and whatever like you can you know i'm up with a good, a good backbone for a song. Another one, another way is that I'll sometimes, <laughs> I'll be like having, a, I'll be driving or, you know, I'll be having like a nap or I'll be sleeping and I'll start to hear something in a dream or like kind of like, you know, or like just something, I don't know how, it's just like a loop. And then I, it's just like, and then you get, I start to get, you know, the feeling like, yo, this would be cool. Like, let's do this. I, you know, I have songs like off that uh, EP that I, put up with egg records um but half of those songs like the rachel is something i was was having a nap and then i just started to hear this bass line in, in it and i was just like how am i going to do this i gotta do it now before it goes away <laughs> type thing but yeah i think the, mo the most I, uh, I spend the most time kind of like uh, just trying to write to it um, and I think it's just because I still have, like, sometimes uh, my lyrics and stuff like that, they just appear. Like, they're really quick. They just kind of like, you know, and then sometimes you know, they, they don't appear as easy. And it's something I'm trying to fix <laughs> because I feel like there's, there's always this place you can tap into. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't, like, like, you know, that is block, right? How often do you experience that? Okay. Because you allow yourself to just kind of go with the flow. You got your, I assume you got your process as well, you know, where it's just easier to just cap, let yourself, you know, be captured. You know? Um, but you're right, though, like writing it down myself, like it, sometimes I, I kind of like whenever I experience that um, per se, it's like I start reflecting on the stuff I've written and I didn't use. So it's like it helps me yeah. get inspired again to to get back into it again. So yeah, I, that, I, oh, that's my two cents on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one, too. And that was something a friend of mine told me like years ago uh, was uh, not to. You know, if you ever became felt stuck on something, like just to 
not delete it, not throw it away, but just put it away in a folder where you don't have to see it and just go back to it. This is, a, yeah, same person that told me that kind of got me into wanting to do this project. And then Ray was having, um, he, well, I don't know, we're just kind of like messaging and he had, he just randomly asked me, hey man, if you had one thing, one band or one project that you wanted to do, like what would it be? And it was something I didn't really, I was, you know, trying different things at the time. And I uh, had an idea, but I feel like that kind of just inspired me to like, just decide and choose, you know, choose something, choose what you want the most and you need to do that. <laughs> you know, I wanted something simple, I told them. <laughs> uh, what, what does actual project um, from, from what we get? is to like a mixture of best of both worlds of kind of showing what your versatility is, um, like the incorporations of different kinds of like music and sounds and beats. Um, so kind of oh, like yeah. um, break into some of those like bands or, or stuff that like inspired you to, to make different songs. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, um, well, let's see, for the EP stuff that I did, um, I was, I was listening to uh, like, like, like a Latin artist, uh, like I was listening to uh, this one lady, uh, Maria Conchita, which uh, I was just telling my bud, I was like, hey man, Maria is our more is Maria Conchita from Millennials. <laughs> and so it was some of that, so you'll hear it a lot with like your show. And, and uh, the first track, uh, Beautiful People. Um, for the other stuff, I mean, like maybe I had gone into, I was like listening to a lot of like electro um, or like EBM. So I had like one track that was kind of more of a funky track. It was like Notre Dame. Yeah. And then I would like, you know, so I was doing stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to do something more of like, I don't know like just more punk so i just did more like a like hey you up was more like that uh the, for the single stuff I, that, that's all the stuff that's kind of like you know uh the stuff i had on saying that like more recent you kind of just started to play i put last like you know like the last two weeks like last week i dropped like two of them because they're just demos and stuff and i was starting to i realized i didn't I didn't really have anything new to show. So I was like, hey man, I've been sitting on all these. So I mean that's that's all kind of uh, new wave, like dancing wave stuff. I feel like one like a song the song I got up there called Um A Rush kind of reminds me of a combination of uh Soft Cell and New Order and something else. I uh Oh, yeah, no, of course, of course, I mean, yeah, they've been doing good. Yeah, they've been lately like a new fan fave. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever heard of the band Sun City Girls? Are you are you familiar? No. Uh, they, I, I mean, I, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I just kind of like wonder because they. I feel like whenever you listen to some like the psychedelic aspect of it, you, I, I kind of like incorporate... I don't know, kind of like that otherworldly stuff, you know, like you're kind of getting like these other aspects of of the music that you're not necessarily getting in um, all of like electronica kind of esque music, you know. There's there's a little bit more real to it um, if you're if you're actually taking the dive and listening. Uh, yeah, and about your mixing and like recording, um, it was like, what are you recording on, and um, kind of what what do you start with first? Okay. Uh, I use uh, I use Logic. I have I think Logic Ten, and I do like most of my recording stuff there. I for vocals I got like a what is it? It's like a Shure. Uh, um, Shure mics. Fuck, I forgot what model it was. It's uh, oh, there it is. It says. SM7B, I got the filter off of it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's a really good mic. I have it running through uh, 
it's a dynamite. It's like basically a cloud. It's a dynamite DM, uh, DM1, which, uh, bring, which gives a game. Because, I mean, those mics on their own don't really have it. And you really, you know, to really get it to the sound, to get that, you know, a nice recording, you got to add, like, a cloud to it just to, like, add more game to the mic. But, yeah, that's helped out a lot. Uh, that's, that's where, you know, and then I have, you know, inside you, I make some, you know, kind of these sort of like kind of like templates that I go, like, that I'll use. Just kind of already, and then I'll just tweak them out a little bit. So I'll use that. I'll build that for a while. And then I'm starting to, I'm incorporating like bass guitar and guitar now to certain things. So, I mean, I'll be just running into an interface. And then I have my Casio, which I got in the first store uh, last year. And it just, it basically, it's, it goes with the sound for sure. And I've just run that through there. Pretty simple so far. Also, shout out some of uh, your favorite bands and music that you've been listening to lately. Let's see. Actually, uh, let me see. I got, I got, you know, after listening to some of your interviews and stuff, and actually a little before, I was like, uh, I was getting into uh, uh, Bjorn's music, um, Alco Dream. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, I was really digging the song. I mean, other, other stuff I, you know, listened to, I don't mean, I'll be like, I got like the motherfucking the usual. I like listening to like some John Mouse or some fucking ABC. Yeah, I like, like a, what's this fucking thing? Ice Tumor. Yeah, I like a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're allowing themselves to to have fun and you know, they're kind of making each I always see the releases as just them just exploring their sounds and their options, allowing there to be space rather than confining themselves to the to just an expectation for fans, you know. Yeah, and like I, I definitely think um, that like as as like I don't know more music comes, um, like what I feel like what I expect or I'm looking for is like. There's really, really raw, random moments like a tiny desk concert or like one of those just kind of stripped down or like remixing a, their their stuff, um, or you know what I mean, just like giving it over to like somebody like random, like James Murphy working on D- DFA or you know, just like it would be like just yeah. something like really like odd, oddball where you're like wow, like they they kind of like really threw a curveball on that one. Um, too, but like, yeah. they they really do for the, I mean especially like with their live stuff. Um, uh, we lost you for a second, but uh, truly, my my phone is at one percent. So if it cuts out, uh, that is why we we'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear. It. I can already hear it. I can already hear the uh, the voice of working into a robot. <laughs> uh, that's how yeah, it goes. Um, I guess before <laughs> before my phone cuts out, um, please share yeah. some songs that you would like to uh, put on the show, and um, also, um, oh, another big question would be a random fact about yourself and your favorite thing to record with. Uh, okay, so let's. Those are three things I'm saying. So for the tracks, uh, would it be tracks that are up on my money? 
Okay. Well, just I'd like to share the the ones off of SoundCloud. I'm going to be dropping some more this week, but uh, the ones that I got right now, which is a uh, Chica, she's got it, and uh, a Rush, it's good. It's good. Those are the two I'm I'm kind of putting up right now. Uh, random fact about myself. Uh, I'm I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. But um, but it's but it's better than being a master of one. <laughs> and um, yeah. So let's see what else. Uh, yeah. Oh, right now I'm a mechanic. That's my occupation. I do automotive. A couple of years ago, I was doing um barbering, and then years before that, I was like fucking working at the college as a barista and then years before that you know and the list goes so on and so on so you know well i was uh in the womb i don't know what, i don't know what job i had made but uh another thing uh okay so you're saying uh to, what do i like to record with well like an instrument <laughs> uh favorite instrument to record with I feel like the one that I have the most fun with is the uh, my Casio. I mean, like it's, I mean, it has a little built-in drum machine. You know, it's it sounds like it, it's fucking falling apart sometimes, and it's like detuning and everything. But that's just the sound it is. Its filters are really nice. I feel like I'm just somewhere else for a moment when I'm just jamming. Oh, uh, like this one's like a button. Like a, it's like one of the. It's an '80s one that was. They're starting to do. They're going. Hey, this is like what well, it's digital, but it's just buttons. Let me see. CT sixty five hundred, and it's pretty cool. It has like, already like the uh, filter effects. You know, they're truly trying to go for like a. I don't know. They got the. I love the chorus. The chorus and the reverb combination is really cool. They like to combine uh, two. There are two different rows of sounds. It has a drum machine, little you know, basic beats, but like it helps for writing. The, so we do jam on that sometimes. The those little uh, Yamaha keyboard synthesizers. Those guys. I swear they never let me down. Like every, <laughs> there we go. Like every time I get them into like those um, like even like a guitar amp or like a keyboard amp, I'm like, wow, I'm like always surprised. Oh shit! And we lost them.